Hey folks, how's it going? Just wanted to get you guys out another video and cover something that's been kind of important to me, something I've been thinking about quite a bit. And as I've gotten responses on these videos, it's caused me to think about things from other angles than maybe I just would have, you know, originally come up with. And so I want to do one that I think is very important when it comes to the farmer consumer relationship and something that should hopefully empower some of well everyone who's watching this video participates in you know cons consumption of food and my point with this whole video is, is that you're spending dollars where you choose to spend your money and what you choose to purchase what you choose to purchase with your money matters and so regardless of what side of the fence you're on pro-chemical, anti-chemical, pro-GMO, pro-non-GMO, or anti-GMO, whatever you want to say. I'm not one way or the other. Um, it doesn't really matter. What matters is, is that farmers are going to choose to grow products or uh, a consumable item in a way to meet the market's demands. And I'm primarily a small grain grower. So wheat, barley, oats, canola, a little bit of hay. And what my area, what my market demands is that we efficiently grow the best quality grains we can and provide that to the export markets, to the local elevators that then participate in the export markets. So when we talk about quality, quality means something too. Quality is a relevant term and so people watching this video might be like you know quality to them matters you know what kind of chemicals are on that product right has it been sprayed with an insecticide has it been sprayed with a fungicide does it have glyphosate residue on it those kind of things our elevators don't care about that i mean obviously they don't want us soaking it with chemical but they want us bringing a product to them that doesn't have bugs in it that is meeting protein uh, quality, not too much protein, not too little protein. So that means that you're fertilizing your fields adequately, but not too much. We want to be at the right protein levels. They also want it to be fairly clean, fairly weed free, uh, fairly trash free. They also want the moisture content to be at a certain level. They really, um, there is not a whole lot of stuff dictating anything on the chemical side of stuff because the markets just aren't demanding it. What they are demanding is that there is a quantity of a reliable food source provided to them in the marketplace as cheap as possible. And we are in competition with Russia, Ukraine, China, Australia, uh, Brazil, India. We're in competition with all of these people in producing a food supply that not just America is demanding, but the world's demanding. So what do you do as a consumer to adjust what you have access to? Well, I'll tell you right now, if for my local grocery stores that I have here, we have access to products that are glyphosate free, that are organic. And those products are more expensive than your bottom shelf products. Now, is there glyphosate residue in the bottom shelf products? Maybe. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I, this is one other thing that's come up, not to go off on a tangent, but I've heard comments that, you know, there is no glyphosate residue on food. That's made up, that's out of the, you know, anti-GMO playbook or I, whatever the comments are. There is glyphosate residue on different foods. The FDA tests for it, they have different levels for it, and you can go on the FDA website and it'll, I think one of the things that pops up there in Google or Wikipedia of, what percentage of glyphosate is typically found in, you know, most your biggest offenders are uh, corn and soy products. Go figure, right? Those are two products that are, there's a lot of GMO production and that GMO technology has allowed them to use that product and keep their fields really clean. So anyways, you know, back to the, you know, what you can do as a consumer, you vote with your spending dollars. Now you're going to say, well, those products are expensive. Yep, they, they definitely are. But what most of the marketplace as consumers are telling us, the farmers, we want more of your cheap crap. 
I don't think it's crap. I think it's a good quality food, but that's, you know, some people's opinion, you know, we want the cheap stuff. We want it reliable. We want it there every year. And, and we want to keep buying that. Now, one other argument that might be made is that a lot of these consumers just aren't educated. That could totally be true. That doesn't fall on my shoulders to educate the entire consumer base what they should or should not be buying. That's up to the people that are raising kids, that's up to the schools, that's up to the governments to educate what these people have going on. I do think that we have some flawed stuff going on in our healthcare system that is causing a lot of people to be sick. Is that the food that we're supplying? Maybe, maybe it needs to get looked into more. I'm not a farmer that's saying, well, it's, it's not because of what we're growing. Could be. But again, as the farmer, what we are doing is providing a product for what the marketplace demands. That's it. Like, it, that, that's, that's, that's the game that's been created for us. I, we have to make things work economically. And those are the rules that have been set for us. There is lots of lofty goals that I have for our operation, lots of things that I want to try, but the biggest things for me that determine what I'm able to do on my operation, time and money. I need more time and I need more money to do more of the, you know, crazy off the salt wall stuff that I want to try. And I, I want to produce quality products. I want to, you know, do the best absolute job that I can. And I believe I'm doing that with the resources that are allocated to me right now. I'm not saying that I can't do a better job, but we're doing the best we can with what we have right now. And that's all we can do. And I think that's what every farmer is trying to do with the resources they have at their disposal. So again, if the consumer chains, changes their consumption habits and what they're choosing to buy, and I think a lot of it comes down to values, I'm not saying that there's not people out there with financial challenges, like, you know, hey, this, the, I can only afford the bottom dollar stuff. You know, I'm, you know, living in, you know, subsidized housing, I'm riding a bicycle to work, things are really tough, and this is all I can afford. I think there's a big group of people, because I know some of these people, a big group of people that choose to drive a really nice SUV, that maybe have multiple homes, that bottom dollar shop, and that still want to complain about what farms are doing, what chemical companies are doing, what all these other people are doing because they want to play victim. No one's a victim here. We all make our own choices and I make my own choices on my farm. I don't blame chemical companies for my situation. I don't blame equipment companies for my situation. I don't blame the government for my situation. There are all kinds of things that I would like to, you know, it'd be really handy just to, you know, stick a tack on any one of these and say, I'm not able to produce because of this. What I do every day, I wake up every day, I put on my shoes and pants the same way you do, and I go out and I do the best I can with what I got, and that's all I can do. And I try to do better each and every day. But I promise you, as a consumer, you have the ability to vote with your spending dollars. If you want more organic food, if you want farmers using less chemicals, those kind of things, then buy the products that support that. Talk to your friends and neighbors about it. Have difficult conversations and say, this is better because of this. And then have them say, no, that sucks. That's not right. And then get into some discussions so that we can actually, you know, like learn how to have a, a productive discussion or a productive disagreement with somebody. Go home and have somebody tell you, you know, what, whichever side of the fence you're on, have them tell you that your side of the fence is wrong and then go home and look up why your side of the fence is wrong. Challenge your own thought process on this. Like, I do it all the time as a farmer. I can't tell you how many farmers are rooted in their beliefs on either side that, you know, uh, uh, GMO is the only way to go. Non-GMO is the only way to go. I know, I know arguments on both sides and I know how they're both wrong. But if we can learn to have productive discussions around this kind of stuff and move things in maybe a positive direction, I think it would help everybody out. So again, I want to grow what you guys are asking for to the best of my ability with the tools and resources that I have in my area. And, uh, you know, that's, that's all we're going to do. So anyways, I hope this video, you know, was thought provoking for some of you, maybe helped some of you out. Um, you know, hit me up in the comment section on there. If there's, you know, something that I missed or something that I'm just not seeing from my end. Again, I, I got a lot of information out of that last video 
that we did on, um, you know, you know, glyphosate kills, you know, and it was, yeah, maybe there was some clickbait and stuff in there, but I had some very thought provoking conversations on both sides of the equation around just that one chemical. Now there's a whole plethora of chemicals that farms use on their operation and that not just farms use, but that we're exposed to every day in our lives. And so, you know, it's just kind of out here recently in the last, you know, 10 years on, you know, microplastics and all this kind of stuff. And look at how much plastic is used in our life. I mean, if you ride a bicycle, there's plastics. Like you're, you go to work, you touch door handles, you do all kinds of stuff. There's plastics everywhere. Are we going to get rid of plastics anytime soon? I don't think so. Um, how much, you know, rubber is consumed in the world and how bad exposure is to rubber and petrochemicals. And I, I don't know. I mean, does that mean everybody gets rid of their cars? We all come up with flying vehicles somehow. I don't know what the answer is to this, but it seems like the more I get into these topics, the more nuanced they all become, the more everybody has a, a different perspective and angle that they're coming from on it. And I don't think that you can pigeonhole somebody into any one specific you know side this or that if, if you take the time to understand where they're coming from i think you'll find out that you probably have more in common than you do uh you know things that you're you know really opposed with and we can come to like this general consensus you know like my my thoughts are going faster than my words can actually go right now so i apologize but uh i don't want to make this any this video any longer i just want to get this you know service announcement out there for farmers and consumers alike that maybe we can kind of come together and you and empower you as a consumer to dictate a little bit more what is provided to you in the marketplace so anyways guys thanks for watching until next time